management. We're a technology company helping organizations transform how they manage their most important asset, which is their employees. Um, I've got the privilege of introducing Brenda Miller today of, of uh, Miller Marketing, and they provide social media content support to individuals and businesses, primarily through LinkedIn. Brenda's been uh, leveraging social media for her own personal and uh, business interests for over 10 years now, and has been helping clients achieve their goals as her main focus. Um, you can find her on all the social media sites, but most importantly, some of the facts, Brenda loves coffee, chocolate, <laughs> who doesn't? And that's the thing, you'll see in her presentation pie. Yes. So with that, I'd like to turn everything over to Brenda. Great, thank you. <laughs> All right, well, good morning. And I'm gonna be doing a Facebook live stream of this presentation today. I do have one point in the presentation where I'll ask for some audience feedback. So is everybody okay if I turn the camera around? Nothing really, I'm not asking you to bury your, your secrets or anything, but I'll ask you a little bit about um, what you're looking to learn in presentation today, just so you know what that's about, okay? Awesome, well, I am so excited to be here today. I love sharing what I know about LinkedIn with others. And my goal is that everyone will walk out of today's presentation with some new insights with regards to LinkedIn analytics. So we'll go ahead and get started here. And what I'm gonna be focusing on today here are a couple of subjects. I'm gonna be talking about your personal profile and how and why you should be assessing your personal analytics on LinkedIn, because that's really gonna help you as you're doing talent recruitment and as you're working on get the, getting the name out for your business, so really knowing your own LinkedIn effectiveness. We'll talk a bit about your company page LinkedIn analytics. Now I use LinkedIn as a marketer and I've also helped clients use LinkedIn for recruitment purposes. I'm not an expert in LinkedIn recruiting, that's a different session altogether, but I'm gonna talk about kind of the front end of LinkedIn and your company page and how to look at those analytics as it relates to talent recruitment. We're gonna talk a bit about your employees and how to engage them on LinkedIn and how that can actually help to amplify your efforts and jumpstart the LinkedIn algorithm. We're gonna talk a bit about that. And then time permitting, we're gonna go through a few LinkedIn basics as well. So whenever I do a LinkedIn talk, I always like to make sure that there's a few items that everybody is already doing, and chances are some of you aren't. So before you leave here the room, I wanna make sure I'm arming you with a few of those basics as well. All right, so a little bit of background of myself, and uh, you already heard some of my loves in life. I love my job, I love my family, I love coffee, pie, and chocolate, and in fact, I'm actually gonna be doing a couple of giveaways of pies here today. And this one is just for everybody here in the room. So you see I've got an apple pie, I'm gonna show it to the camera here too. Apple pie giveaway here today. So if you'd like to enter for the apple pie, just for the people in the room, I'm gonna pass this pie tin around, and you just drop your uh, business card in there, and do a drawing at the end. So guaranteed winner here in the room today. And I'm doing two more pie giveaways today. So I think we'll do one at the table and maybe one at lunch and at the end of today's uh, conference here today. All right, so I've used LinkedIn as a job seeker, I've used LinkedIn as a marketer, and I've also used LinkedIn as a consultant and as a trainer. And I bring in that perspective of the job seeker into today's presentation as well as as a consultant trainer. Um, LinkedIn is not a job search website, it's actually a professional networking site with some job search applications. And I even hear sometimes when I do these talks that people don't want to be on LinkedIn because they don't want the perception that they're using it for job search, and I kind of remind them it's actually more about staying active all the time and having your professional presence on LinkedIn. So that's a little bit of my experience. Um, I, in my spare time, I'm an introvert at heart. <laughs> I uh, do speaking presentations because it helps to keep me in front of audiences, and I know that it's something I'll always have to work on. So I did Toastmasters many years ago, and any chance I get to speak, I speak. And I share that with you because my guess is there's at least one person in the room that when I said I'm an introvert at heart, you're like, no, you're not, you're speaking in front of a room. But I have acknowledged it, I've embraced it as part of my personality, it's not a weakness, it's just part of my personality. And I always have to work on, on kind of coming out of that shell. I love and hate cooking, you know how that mean, what that means if you're a parent, right? <laughs> it's what you cook, they don't eat. Uh, love doing jigsaw puzzles, just solving kind of the, uh, the puzzles. So that's something, if I had a big table in the house, I'd always have a, a puzzle out and always be doing a puzzle out there. And in terms of LinkedIn, there are a lot of people that you have to connect with, and I'm gonna give you a couple names of people from this conference today. If you are not already connected, do make sure that you connect with Lee Meadows, Tina Marie Wolfield, actually I have to add Sandy Harvey to the list there, they were the three collaborators for today's event. All of today's presenters, so you've got a program with all the presenters' names, make sure you connect with those individuals. 
And the reason I share this with you is because people who are involved with planning conferences, people who are speaking in front of rooms, we have a lot of connections. And when you connect with us and when you engage with us on LinkedIn, this is a little bit I'll be talking about later, but when you engage with us on LinkedIn, your own efforts will be amplified as well. Meaning you will get more profile views, you will get more invitations as well. So keep that in mind as we go throughout here. All right, so enough about me. Now I'm gonna turn the camera around and I'm gonna go around the room, maybe get a couple volunteers to tell me about you. So if you could tell me why you chose this session. You had what, three or four breakouts to choose from? So why did you choose this session? Just, just one? No. Not you. <laughs> I won't point to you. Um, tell me your company, your role, what you do at work, and tell me what your favorite kind of pie is. Okay, so again, any volunteers from the audience? I'm gonna flip the camera around. Okay, Mark. I'm Mark Albrecht. Uh, I chose this session because I was an early adopter of LinkedIn, and Brenda, I know you are amazing on LinkedIn, <laughs> so I wanted to find out all your secrets. I'm the head of uh, human resources with um, Orleans, and my favorite kind of pie is that Michigan, like four or five berry. Excellent, very good choice, okay. Anyone else? All right, back to the room. Hi, uh, my name is Tabitha Pittman. Uh -huh. I am the human resources manager for a company called Orflow. Okay. Um, I chose this session because we recently subscribed to the LinkedIn Recruiter, and uh, for me, I'm doing the analytics yes. of um, everything that my dollars are budgeted for, Absolutely. and uh, where they're going, and how they are costing out to the company, and what the uh, revenue generated from them is. Okay. So I want to be able to know more about okay. LinkedIn and how I can utilize it. Good. My favorite kind of pie is a sweet potato pie. Excellent. My husband's favorite type of pie too, so love sweet potato pie. Anybody else? One more person. You're going to be on the camera. You'll get some publicity for your business from doing this too. <laughs> yes? I'm Yolanda Moore. Um, I ch I'm newly into uh, human resources seven months in as a corporate recruiter. Okay. Um, and my favorite kind of pie is lemon pie, but I chose this session mm -hmm. just to get more acclimated, get more ideas to stimulate to my department. I'm gonna go back and report out okay. what I've learned today and how I can optimize LinkedIn to help our recruiting. Excellent, thank you so much, you're good. Welcome. And lemon lemon meringue or? Uh, my mom makes a, a homemade lemon meringue lemon? pie. Okay, is homemade's the best, right? Yes, when you have it that way. Hey Tina, truck. you're on Facebook Live right now too. How you doing? <laughs> Tina Marie in the back there, guys. <laughs> And there's Sandy Harvey. Hey, Sandy. <laughs> they didn't know what they were getting when I did this. Was there one other hand over here somebody else wanted to? Yeah, Sarah. Uh, so my name is Sarah Zagilla. I'm a business development executive for Innovative Learning Group. Mm -hmm. I consider you to be the guru of LinkedIn, and I'm always learning some tips and tri or tricks from you, and I just want to pick your brain for some more. So Great. Okay. My favorite type of pie is um, apple pie. Apple pie is a great yes. solid pie. You yes. cannot complain. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to flip my camera back over here. Hopefully, uh, I think I've got it in the right position over here. So, and um, sometimes I do this and people are like, well, what's your favorite kind of pie? And I have to say, like, choosing a favorite pie for me is like choosing a favorite child. I cannot do it. You know, it's just, it's too hard because there's, there's the fruit pies and the double crust and the chocolate and the pecan pie. I'm like, just don't make me choose. I, I love all pies equally for, for different reasons. So that's, that's a little bit about my, my love of pie. So a couple facts as we get started here, and, and I want you to keep these things in mind as we're talking about LinkedIn analytics and as we talk about how to be more effective on LinkedIn. LinkedIn now has 562 million members across the globe, and those individuals are in over 200 countries, and just about every industry is now represented. And I should mention it, because I saw a couple cameras go up, feel free to take pictures of me and or of the slides as I'm presenting. I work in social media, so I am not shy about sharing the information. Everything I've shared, I want it to be a resource for you. And related to that, if you'd like a copy of the slides so you don't have to write furiously throughout, connect with me on LinkedIn and I will message you a link to download the copy of the slides. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm forcing you to practice the techniques of connecting with people on LinkedIn so that we can stay connected as well. And I'll give you a copy of the slides even today, if you email me today on LinkedIn, I will send them to you today, okay? So 40 of the 562 million people that are on LinkedIn, about 20, 250 million are logging in at least once a month. That means another, what, 262? I'm not good at math, so whatever. It's a higher number than that are not going on monthly on LinkedIn. They're actually going on maybe once a quarter, once every six months, when they think about it, when they're ready to make a job change. So they're not on every day. Now, of the people that are active, you've got about 40% of those people are actually logging in daily. So that's me. I mean, I'm logging in probably four to five times a day on LinkedIn. 
And if you're in a recruiting role, you might be logging in daily as well when you've got those job postings that are coming up. So keep that in mind, only about 40% of the people are logging in daily. Now, this average I think it's kind of skewed because you have the people that go on very rarely and then the people that are on probably for hours a day. But in totality, they say that the average person is on LinkedIn 17 minutes a month. So that's not a lot of time. So, and think about when you go on LinkedIn, when you're looking through the homepage feed, you only see maybe a dozen or so updates. And if you're not in those updates, you kind of blend in the background and people forget about you. Now, I guarantee if you connect with me on LinkedIn, I will be one of those people that are always in your homepage feed. Would you agree with that, Sarah? Like every time you come into LinkedIn, you're gonna see an update from me in the homepage feed. And one thing I do is, as a marketer, I'm not selling myself and my business all the time. I'm actually engaging with my network connections. So later on today, you're gonna see I'm gonna do a Friday shout and I'll be focusing on someone in my network. And I get a lot of engagement from those posts. So kind of keep that in mind as we go throughout. So what I wanna start with is your personal LinkedIn analytics and then we're gonna move into some company page analytics. Now if you do have your, your mobile phone with you, if you have the LinkedIn app installed, go ahead and pull up your profile because you'll be actually be able to see some of your analytics as we're looking at this, okay? So what I'm gonna start with is we're gonna talk about your LinkedIn dashboard and what those numbers mean, why they're important as it relates to, um, to LinkedIn. We're gonna talk about your LinkedIn SSI. Does anybody in the room know what that means, SSI on LinkedIn? Anybody? Social selling index. Excellent, do you know what your score is? Uh, I believe I'm like an 83. Excellent, very good. So social selling index is a score that LinkedIn gives you effectively assessing how effective are you at social selling on LinkedIn, connecting with the right people engaging with your network, and um, doing the things that they think, you know, building meaningful conversations. It's a scale of zero to 100. And I've met a couple people that have been in the upper 80s to 90s. I've never met anybody who's been really higher than that. And I've even heard that if you don't have LinkedIn Sales Navigator, you're never gonna get above the 90 points. So do keep that in mind. But 80, 83, that's a very, very good score. And then we're gonna talk about some at-a-glance numbers. So I do a lot of LinkedIn training consulting and these are some numbers that I can quickly see your effectiveness as I'm looking at your profile, okay? So let's start with your LinkedIn dashboard. If you've got your phone, go into your profile. You're gonna see this dashboard on your phone in your, in your individual profile, okay? So there's three numbers that they're giving you here. The first number is who's viewed your profile in the last 90 days. Now don't freak out when you're looking at your number and when you look at my number. This is what I do for a living. If my number was really low, I should not be here talking, right? So my number, I'm always working on how do I get more profile views? How do I optimize my profile? And these are the techniques that I, I train and educate people on. So my number is going to be a little higher here. But in terms of that first number, I would say if you want to increase your number of profile views, you know, why is that important? Well, if you're doing talent recruitment, if people are checking out your organization, they may be checking out your profile as well. So the more people you bring to your profile, if you're posting status updates about those jobs, you're getting more visibility for those job postings. So profile views are, are a good thing. If you fill out every area of your LinkedIn profile, you will get more profile views because you'll come up in more searches and people will be able to find you on LinkedIn. In addition, if you're engaging with your LinkedIn network on a regular basis, if you're paying it forward, that whole social media karma concept, if you're liking, commenting, and even sharing other people's posts, you will get more profile views. Now, one technique I've learned that's been really, really effective in terms of network engagement is when you comment on somebody's LinkedIn post, try to comment with five or more words. So if Lee posts an article, I wouldn't just say, nice article, I would say, that is a great article, Lee, thanks for sharing, so eight or nine words, right? And when you do that, if you post two words as a comment, LinkedIn says, eh, it's kind of interesting, but they're not really talking about it. When you post five or more words, LinkedIn says, well, hold on, there's a whole conversation that's starting over here. And then if Lee were to reply back to me with five words, thanks, Brenda, great to see you today, then we've got some conversation going back and forth, and the algorithm kind of wakes up, and it says people are talking about this post. We're going to keep this post hanging out in the homepage feed a little bit longer, okay? And when people do that, um, when or there's engagement that's happening with a post, your post stays up in the status uh, feed a little bit longer, there's a higher likelihood that they're gonna click on Lee's profile to see who he is and click on my profile to see who I am. So I get some profile views from that. So try that five or more comment technique. Um, in addition, this is something I'm kind of testing out lately and I'm, I'm having really great results and that's why my numbers are, are so high. 
You can supercharge your profile views by interacting with the right people. So interact strategically. Interact with people who have a large number of connections. And there's actually a way you can kind of assess how many, how many um, followers they have on LinkedIn. If they've done any sort of activity on LinkedIn, it'll show you approximately their follower count. So I look for people who have large number of followers and I engage with their content and that gives me a nice spike in my profile views. Is that making sense for some of you guys that are using LinkedIn, you know what I'm talking about? Okay, good. So the second number is the last time you have posted on LinkedIn. And whether that is a job posting that you're sharing, some news or information about your company, an inspirational quote, whatever it is, the last time you've posted, it's saying here's how many times that post has been viewed. Meaning how many times has it appeared on your homepage feed, if somebody's eyeballs scroll past it, how many times has that appeared in profile, in your, your homepage for LinkedIn? So this number varies wildly based on how long ago it was that I posted, the time of day, the day of the week. But I do like to look at posts that are performing well. And you know the expression in Vegas, let it ride. So if you're getting a really good response to your post, let it ride. Let it sit out there. Don't post on top of it because that will keep that engagement going up. So what I would say there is when you're looking at the numbers there in terms of individual posts, what works? Do more of that. If something is not working well, then don't do posts like that anymore. Kind of shift your efforts there. And especially in, in um, each of you, if you're in an HR role or a recruitment role, part of this is building out visibility for your company and part of it is sharing your expertise, right? Um, working with a client recently, and he was blogging about uh, trends in you know, senior level individuals going through a career transition. And he blogged about career tips. He said, here are the things you should be aware of to make sure that you're minimizing the risk that you're taking when you're doing a job change. And his, employee, and his organization does recruitment. So he's getting a lot more profile views, which is driving people to look at his company page, which is driving people into the job posting, to look and apply for that job posting. Okay, so keep that in mind. The third number, this is just search appearances, how many times you appeared in search results in the past week. And what I would recommend there is just make sure that you've fully filled out every area of your profile. The more you fill out in terms of keywords, phrases, descriptions, more, the more likely you'll be to come up in some of those search results. And that's kind of it. So I do want to show you this, this trend line. And this is my trend line that I, I'm showing for the past 90 days. And I almost like thinking about, you remember in statistics class when we drew like a line across and it was like, where, where is it going? Is it trending up? Is it trending down? So almost when you're looking at your 90 days, kind of look at, is it flat or are you actually trending up in there? Kind of, kind of dive into that a little bit. And what I do is I focus on the peaks. Okay, what did I do on those three days that drove the activity? Now I know this one, this is actually my last peak here. This was actually accidental. So I was um, presenting, and when I do presentations on LinkedIn, I'll, I'll talk about how to personalize an invitation. And I also talk about how to reply back to invitations you get from people you don't know. And when I get invitations from people you don't know, I always screen them. So I reply without accepting. And I didn't have any pending invitations in my inbox at that time. I'd already messaged everybody, so I had nothing pending. So I posted on LinkedIn and I said, I'm presenting tomorrow and I need to get a couple new invitations to demonstrate this example of replying. And I posted, this was like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, and I posted it, and the next morning I'm like, I'm probably gonna take that down, because that was just like a behind the scenes thing I needed. And it was like, it blew up. Like all the, I said, if you comment on this, it'll show it to your first level connections, because if you're first level, you can't invite me to connect, I'm already connected with you. So I need your second and third, so can you guys help me out? And it was like, I don't even know how many responses I got back, but I, I think within the matter of by noon the next day, I had 100 new invitations coming into my inbox on LinkedIn. And I was like, oops, <laughs> but it worked out pretty well. I got a lot of great invitations from it. So that's where that peak came from. So focus on your own peaks. What are you posting? What's getting a lot of engagement? Don't worry about the valleys. Those will happen. And especially around the holidays, um, you know, those things will happen as well. So don't worry too much about those, but focus on your overall trend. Okay. And as it relates to, um, you know, talent recruitment strategies, why are these numbers important? You know, why should you care about these numbers? Well, I would say more profile views means more people are interested in your company, learning about your organization. And if you're posting status updates about your jobs, you're getting more applicants looking at that posting. Okay, that's really important. You are all powerful people. When you post status updates with your jobs, you will get more views than just posting it in LinkedIn jobs alone. The second number, post views, you know, if you post that status update, the more people looking at it, the more potential candidates looking at it. And the third number, why is that important for you in an HR recruiting role? 
Higher search appearances means that you are an in-demand employer. People are actually seeking you out, you're the gatekeeper, they want to connect with you, that's a good thing. Regardless if you connect with them or not, that number is a good number. And here's some overall numbers. I'm not going to go through everything here on this slide, but these are some other numbers that I look at when I'm assessing your profile effectiveness on LinkedIn. And it's almost like, you know, when you go to an auto mechanic and they can pull up your trunk and turn it on and they know, yep, I know exactly what you're doing here and I know exactly what we need to do to fix it. So this is kind of my uh, equivalent of that. I look at, you know, your connection count and based on the industry that you're in, your job title, I can kind of guess, you know, are you lower than you should be or are you restricting your, your invitations for a certain reason? Perfectly fine to do that. But I can kind of assess right away where, where I think you should be in connect account. I also look at how many people are following you. So people can follow you without connecting to you. If you have a huge follower count, um, that might mean you're not accepting all the invitations that are coming in or, you know, there, there may be other reasons they're not inviting you to connect on LinkedIn. Maybe they don't think you're going to accept an invitation and that's why that number might be off there. But follower counts should be slightly higher than your connections, just a little bit higher than that. Um, views in the 90 days we already talked about. I also look at what is your ratio of views to connections and views to followers. And I kind of look at, are you getting a lot of people that are actually engaging with your content and engaging with your posts? That will drive some of those numbers up, okay? Status updates, um, you know, how often are you um, posting a status update? I'll look at that. And then I also look at individual status updates. How many times are those being viewed and how many likes and comments and shares? If you're not getting any engagement on your status updates, guys, you're doing them the wrong way. You need to reassess your status updates and re kind of reconfigure those. Um, so that kind of covers just some high level, how I look at assessing LinkedIn performance on the personal page. Now the LinkedIn SSI, and you can, if you're on your phone, if you're already logged in to, to LinkedIn, you can Google LinkedIn SSI and, and pull up a link. I actually put a, a link on my webpage, mellermarketing.com slash my LinkedIn SSI. If you hit that, it'll take you to a button where it automatically takes you out to this page. Um, but my LinkedIn score is an 83, and this is again, it's LinkedIn's, um, 83, right? 84, sorry. Yours was an 83. I had the 83 stuck in my head. So this is LinkedIn's way of assessing your effectiveness of social selling. How good are you at connecting with the right people? How good are you at engaging with your connections and building rapport, posting relevant industry content? So wherever you are, that's a starting point and kind of try to work on increasing that number or you know, in the case of you've got a really high number, how to maintain that number and not really drop it. And I think it's, again, it's an arbitrary number that LinkedIn gives you, but it is a way to use analytics to assess your performance, okay? So do check that link out if you haven't done so already. All right, so now let's move into some company page analytics. And I do want to leave some time at the end if we have some, some time for questions here as well. But I want to move into company page analytics next, and then we'll, we'll talk about a couple other things with your LinkedIn um, personal use as well. So starting with your company page analytics, I am going to be accessing my company page here to go through these analytics. If you have a laptop, you can follow along with your company page. Unfortunately, the app is not really friendly for looking at company page analytics. I think you can try, but I'm not sure how many numbers you'll see here. But again, if you have your laptop, go ahead and pull up your company page. If you're an admin, you're going to be able to see these analytics, only if you're an admin. So how many people in the room here are an admin for their company page? Show of hands. Just one? Okay, so you'll know they access your admins. <laughs> the others, if you're interested, you could ask you know, whoever is in charge of your LinkedIn company page to give you that access. If you are self-employed or work for a small organization, or for that matter, any organization and you don't yet have a LinkedIn company page, you can and should set up a company page for free. And that way, that area is gonna be linked to your experience section on your profile, and you'll get some additional views from that. So I'm now logged into my company page on LinkedIn. I'm gonna walk you through a couple different areas of analytics. We have under the analytics tab, you can see there's visitors, updates, and followers. So there's a couple different ways you can kind of slice and dice and look at this information and assess the effectiveness of your company page on LinkedIn. So what I like to do, I start with my visitor analytics, and these are people who've actually visited my company page on LinkedIn. Now by default, when you first come in here, I think they put it at the last seven days or last 15 days. That's really not enough time to see any trends. And that's what we're looking at when we're looking at our analytics. What are our trends? Are we, is our trend line going up? Is it flat? Is it down? Are we seeing peaks and valleys and trying to assess 
what's driving that activity as we're looking at our company page. So I looked at just the last 30 days in here and that's a good time frame to give me some sense of um, really what the activity is that's happening on LinkedIn. And why should you care about these analytics? And many of you are in HR and recruiting roles and, and you may only care about the analytics as it relates to hiring and, and finding talent on LinkedIn. Well, the spike in visitors should correlate to when you're posting jobs or status updates for jobs. If you're doing more of that activity, you should see some, some peaks that are happening in there. Secondly, and this is really important, um, because LinkedIn is not just a job search website, it's a professional networking site, sometimes people will not engage with your post. And when I say engage, I mean they won't like it or comment it, because when they do that, it appears in their timeline. Mm -hmm. And if I'm happily employed and I start liking and commenting on job postings, my employer might go, well, maybe she's not happily employed, and they might be questioning things. So that job seeker mentality, you gotta keep that in mind. So you may start to see visitors and impressions, people looking at your page, but not engagement. So don't feel that even if you're not getting likes and comments that you should not post. Just keep in mind that's kind of that uh, job seeker mentality, okay? So moving on here, we're gonna go on to next into my update analytics. So we have visitors to our pages, we have status updates on our, our company page, and um, this is a second number here. So this again, I changed my time period to the past 30 days so I can kind of see what's happening overall on my company page here on LinkedIn. Um, and I just focus here on you know, the spike in impressions. You know, when am I starting to see uh, a spike based on updates that I'm posting on my company page? Um, another thing here too is that even if your candidates aren't engaging with your status updates on LinkedIn, you can get your employees, and I actually do recommend asking your employees to engage with those posts. And the reason for doing that is when your employees like or comment on a post or share that post, it helps to jumpstart the engagement. Remember when I said earlier when you go into your LinkedIn homepage feed and the ones that are getting at the top of the feed are the ones that are getting a lot of engagement? Well, if you can get your employees on board with starting to like, comment, and share these on their personal homepage feed, that's gonna help to jumpstart the algorithm to get those status updates ling lingering out there a little bit longer. So do keep that in mind, that does help drive impressions on your company page. So moving on, you know, continuing on that discussion of your employees as brand ambassadors. And um, I always feel like your employees should be the biggest advocates for your organization, you know. And you guys probably know who they are, right? You probably know they're the ones that are already interacting with your social media, maybe with some trepidation because they don't know if they should or not. Nobody in management has told them it's okay. They're worried because LinkedIn is a job search site, it's not. But they're worried if they start interacting more on LinkedIn that you might feel they're not happy with their position. So what I would say is, you know, you really should empower these individuals and give them permission to actually interact on your company page because their engagement does start to help jumpstart the algorithm on the site itself and those, and those posts. LinkedIn, it doesn't discern whether employee, if it's an employee of your organization or if it's a random person off the street. A like is a like, a comment is a comment. It doesn't say, well, he works for this institution, so we're not gonna include that in the analytics. LinkedIn doesn't get down to that level of granularity. So a like is a like, and your employees can help to jumpstart that. And what I think is really important too is when you think about employees who are not shy about engaging with your company page content, that demonstrates that it's a good place to work. They're happy, they're proud, they're openly sharing that the organization is a great place to work, right? So think about that whole com uh, the whole concept of social proof. Sometimes we believe more about what the customers or the actual audiences have to say about your organization than we do believe about what you and you have to say about your organization, right? So we can describe ourselves, what our culture is like, what the workplace is like, why you should want to work here. You can do that up and down all day long, but if you start to get your employees saying, yes, it is a great place to work, I love working here, you should check out the job openings, just think about kind of the impact on the give them, here's some things you can do, and we would love for you to do during your work day because this supports our business, right? So the first thing is to say follow our company page on LinkedIn. My guess is there's probably some of your employees that aren't even doing that. They're not following your company page. Now when they follow your company page, your company page starts to share in their homepage feed and they'll start to see some updates that are coming through there, okay? So do keep that in mind. 
I also want to encourage you to share your company page update on their LinkedIn as a status update. So they can visit your company page, pick a status update from that company page, and share it on their LinkedIn, right? And sometimes what I do is actually give them a link and I say visit this link and you can click to share right on that button. Make it super, super easy for them to do. And then finally, you know, ask your employees, you know, especially you know who those cheerleader, those supercharged ambassadors are, say, hey, what should we be posting on LinkedIn? And they may give you suggestions for, gosh, you know, we have bring your walk, dog to work day. Why don't we put a picture of the office dog on our LinkedIn? Or they might say, you know, we have this program here where we do picnics once a month. Why don't we showcase that? Gosh, they can help you to generate some of the content to support your talent recruitment strategies, right? To actually showcase what it is that your organization has to offer. So I kind of like to think about this, you know, figure out who your brand champions are and give them pom-poms. Give them a way to kind of shout from the rooftops why they love working with your organization. And that, I guarantee, is gonna to help to supercharge some of your efforts. Um, so kind of finishing off, and I'm gonna do a quick time check here. Lee, what time are we ending the session here today? Oh, midnight. Midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Realistically, <laughs> 11, we have 11.15, so we're gonna have some time for Q&A. I wanna make sure I'm, I'm sensitive. <laughs> All right, so I wanna kind of go into some LinkedIn basics, and then I'm gonna open it up to some questions from the audience, okay? So again, as I said in the beginning, if you came a little bit late, every time I present on LinkedIn, there's some basic concepts that I feel people should do on LinkedIn, and I wanna make sure before you walk out of the room that we've covered off a couple of those concepts. If you have your phone, get your phone out, because we're gonna actually practice a couple techniques here. So um, we're gonna talk about some basics. We're gonna talk about completing your profile and periodically reviewing it. I'm gonna show you my profile checklist here in just a minute and walk you through that. I'm gonna talk about personalizing every invitation you send on LinkedIn, and we're gonna practice inviting somebody in the room to connect with us, okay? And then we're gonna talk us on focusing on social media karma, paying it forward, talking more about your network than you do about yourself and your company, and how that can be effective. So we're gonna practice that if you're open to doing so as well. So first let's start with your, your profile checklist on LinkedIn. And, and a lot of times when I connect with people on LinkedIn, they know what I do, they'll say, Brenda, can you take a look at my profile? Tell me what you think. What am I missing? And you know, what should I change? So I put together, this is my profile checklist. This is kind of the top to down as I'm looking through your profile. What are the things that I look for as I'm looking through? And I start with at the very top of your profile, you have two sections for images. You've got your headshot and you've got a background image on your LinkedIn. Your headshot, what I'm looking for there is pleasant, professional, smiling, current, meaning it wasn't taken 20 years ago. We've all aged, right? You guys know who I'm talking about, right? There's a couple people you're like, that's clearly not in this decade or even in the millennium, I don't know. But, you know, represent yourself, put your best face forward, and especially in your roles, you are the faces of your organization. It's worth the investment to get a professional headshot photo taken. At minimum, please make sure it's not a vacation selfie where you've got an arm off the side or the sunglasses or poorly lit. Make sure it's a nice representation of yourself. Now, if you're looking at your profile on your phone, you're gonna also notice there's an image behind your head and it's rectangular. My guess is many of you have the teal blue with interconnected dots and lines. That's the default. You are representatives of your organization. Get some branding in the background over there. And help me out, is it Sean? Your name, sir, I'm sorry, Cameron. Cameron. Cameron, sorry, Cameron, what's your last name? Hutcherson. Cameron Hutcherson. Look up Cameron Hutcherson on LinkedIn, and he is an example of a branded header in his LinkedIn. So he's actually using you know, a picture in the background, he's got some words, and he's got some different things. You don't mind, I'm giving you a shout out here, do you, Cameron? <laughs> and this is a good example of changing it from that teal blue and actually giving it some branding. When you think about that Bit, that uh, image in the background, I always tell people, think about like you're driving on 75 and it's basically they've given you a free billboard to talk about whatever you want, to put some branding in there. And you ever see those billboards that says this space available for rent? That's kind of the same thing when I look at LinkedIn profile and it's the teal and the blue in there. And then think about this too, don't just kind of set it and forget it, think about updating that image every couple months. Because think about when you drive by the billboard and you see they've got the McRib at McDonald's and you see that the first time and then you drive by a week later and you kind of ignore it because you've seen it for a week or so. And then, um, you know, Subway's got the five for five deal back and you notice that message again. So same thing, use that header image in the background to promote your business and think about swapping that out maybe every month or so. How do you change it? 
Um, you can do it from your phone. I recommend doing it from your desktop. So there's a little pencil icon that's in your top header card where you can go through. And if you don't have any branded header images, talk to your marketing department and say, hey, Brenda told me I should have something branded in the background here. Maybe they can give you a picture of your um, the building photo of your organization or something branding in the background there. The next thing I look for is underneath your name, there's a field, it's called headline. The field is not called job title, but LinkedIn by default will put job title at company in that area. And what I would recommend, if it says job title at company, if it's HR manager at ABC Co, something like that, I would say change that. Look at something that's a little bit broader, more descriptive, kind of tells people who you are, what you do. Um, you can think about the I help blank with blank statement. You know, I help new employees find positions at my company or something to that effect. But try to make it a little bit broader, more descriptive, not just your job title. And kind of start to notice other people's headlines on LinkedIn as you're working through um, that piece of it. I then look to see how many connections you have on LinkedIn. And there's not a magical number here, guys, but what I would say is if you have less than 10 connections and I land on your profile, I'm probably not going to send you an invitation to connect because I think you've forgotten about that account or you're not active. I'm not just going to send you an invitation, okay? So just work on growing those numbers all the time. There's not a magical number. I know we all get that little boost of our ego when we hit the 500 plus number because we get the 500 plus on there. But don't worry too much about the numbers. Worry more about the quality of the connections that you're getting there, okay? I then look down to see what do you have in your summary statement on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn gives you up to 2,000 characters total to tell us your story. So this is you speaking to your audience. Your summary statement should be in the first person. It should not say results-oriented, or career professional, focused on HR and recruiting, blah, 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 blah. That's your resume summary statement. Your LinkedIn summary should be, I help people in businesses with marketing and social media. I started Miller Marketing because X, Y, Z. Tell us your story. What is it that you do? Why are you passionate about what you do? Uh, what gives you the greatest satisfaction about your job? And then tell your target audience who you want to connect with and how you can help them. Tell a little bit about your story in that summary section, okay? Moving on, I then look at your experience section, and what I would say is make sure that your experience section, that you've filled out a little bit of information about your employer in there, because people will look at your profile, and maybe they won't click over to your company page or to the job posting, but they'll spend a little bit of time on your profile. So start each employer with a one to two sentence description, what is the company, what products and services that you offer. And spend the most time on your current employer, obviously, here, guys, right? Tell us your story. What does your organization do? What are the products and services that you offer? And if you are in a recruiting role, tell people how to apply your organization. Here's where to go to look for the latest job postings, or look at my status updates, follow my company page, go to the LinkedIn jobs, tell your candidates where should they be looking for that information. So kind of filling the rest of that experience section out, and then I do look at two other areas of your LinkedIn profile, your endorsements um, and skills section, and then I look at your recommendations section as well. Most important thing for skills is what are the top three that are listed on your profile. So looking at your profile right now, LinkedIn will automatically categorize the top three based on those that you've, given, you've gotten the most endorsements from in your network. That does not mean that those are your top three skills. You can and you should evaluate what are the top three that they have listed. And if you don't feel like those are the top three that, both, uh, that best represent you, you can actually unpin, you have to do this in the desktop, you can unpin and you can move things around. So if I want to be known for public speaking, for LinkedIn strategy, and for marketing consulting, those are going to be the three that I pin to the top of my profile. Don't worry as much about how many endorsements you get. You know, you will get endorsements by having those top three reorganized. But focus more on what are the top three that are showing. Having said that, LinkedIn gives you 50 skills on your profile. Guess how many skills I have on my profile? Out of 50. Maybe. I have 50 because I am optimizing every area LinkedIn gives me. So I would encourage you, if you don't have 50 skills yet listed on your LinkedIn and you're struggling with, I can't think of anything else, look up your competitors. Look up other people who have your job title and see what skills they have and consider adding those into your profile as well. Okay? And then the final section I look at are um, your recommendations on LinkedIn. And these recommendations are always very telling. If you don't have any at all, it tells me you're either not active on LinkedIn or nobody can say anything nice about you. And you can't, you can't think of one person to say something nice about as well. I mean, that's very telling. Maybe you just haven't thought about the recommendations on LinkedIn that way and you know this is a little bit of a, a wake up call to kind of think about that. 
But what I would focus on is, um, and what I look for in profiles is, do you have one or two recommendations that you've been given in the past year? And do you have one or two recommendations that you have received in the past year? Okay, so given tells me you're always thinking about your network, thinking about paying it forward, helping others, that you see the good in other people and you want to help support them. That's a very telling thing. The ones that you've received, they tell me what do other people think about you? Do you have at least a couple people in your network that would say something nice about working with you, right? And if you don't have any, I would say, think about the people that you have great working relationships. These can be current employees, former employees, vendors, maybe people that are in a nonprofit organization that you're highly involved with. Think about people outside in the community and ask them, can you give me a recommendation on LinkedIn? Okay, that does help with, as people are assessing, is this the kind of person I wanna work for? Is this the type of organization that might be a good fit? You know, those recommendations kind of tell us a little bit of your story, okay? So pay it forward, focus on people that you could give recommendations to if you're able to. I know sometimes in HR we have to be kind of careful of, of the rules of those things, but if you're able to do so, definitely focus on giving a couple recommendations to people in your network. And right now, think mentally, who are a couple people I could give recommendations to in my network? Could be vendors, clients, coworkers, people that you mentor, could be organizations that you're involved with that you're really passionate about supporting. So think about paying it forward and think about those other people in your organization in those organizations you could recommend. Okay, so that's my quick profile checklist. That's kind of a, a fast version of reviewing it. Does anybody know who this, this is up on here on the screen? Inigo Montoya, I think Princess Bride, is that right? This has been floating around for a little while. Um, but when we talk about sending invitations on LinkedIn, this does a really good job of kind of explaining what are the best um, kind of practices with regards to sending invitations on LinkedIn. And it really captures it nicely. So he says, hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father, prepare to die, right? And it's got the great elements of a LinkedIn invitation in here. He has a polite greeting, the hello. He has his name. He has a relevant personal link. And he is managing expectations. Now, when you send a LinkedIn invitation, please do not tell people prepare to die, <laughs> right? <laughs> but you do want to ask for the invitation in here. So the formula that I like to follow when I'm sending a LinkedIn invitation, you can kind of see it along the right here. I start with hi, first name, and then I will say if I've met you or not. If I haven't met you, I'll kind of let you know that up front. If I have, I might say we met at today's Michigan HR Analytics event to kind of remind you where we met. And then why I wish to connect. So what I do here is I'll actually look through your profile and I'll find one or two or three items to comment on. Those might be things that we have in common, they may be things that interested me or you know something something kind of related to that a lot of times it's hi I'm gonna use Sarah hi Sarah we haven't met but I see that we're both in Metro Detroit and we share many common connections in the HR industry let's connect on LinkedIn right so the invitation here it's all about Sarah even if I want to recruit Sarah as a candidate it's not that's not what's happening in the invitation um, if I'm trying to sell to Sarah, I do not do that in the invitation. The invitation is all about Sarah and trying to get Sarah to accept my invitation back because now I've got a dialogue that's established here. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to practice personalizing invitations. And before we do this, show of hands, how many people are personalizing every invitation right now on LinkedIn? Okay, good. So you guys can kind of sit back and enjoy yourselves on here. You can still connect with other people in the room here. But from this moment on, this is one of these LinkedIn basics, you should personalize every invitation you send on LinkedIn, okay? So if you're not yet connected with me, you can look my name up, Brenda Mahler, you can practice sending this invitation to me. If you're already connected with me, go to your left or right or behind you, find somebody else's name here in the room that you're not yet connected to, and follow along with me. I want you to pull up their profile. Do not click on the connect button. So when you get to their profile, hold on here for just a second, okay? So everybody got a name? People that are practicing here? Okay. So when you get that loaded up into your search, I want you to go onto their profile. And then what I want you to do is actually click on the more button over here. Okay, I think we're getting our invitations loaded up here. All right, so go on their profile. Do not click on connect. If you click connect, it will send the invitation off and you will not have the opportunity to personalize. So do not click connect. If you accidentally click, click on connect to me, you will get my reply greeting and I'll say, hi, Kathy, thanks for the invitation, have we met, and I'll do something a little in there. But if you okay. sent that off and it, you didn't personalize, find somebody else. So if you're already connected with, um, with the gentleman to your left there, then try to maybe a woman behind you or, or someone else here in the room. You can even look up Gerald Chittick. Gerald's one of the, um, I think, 
maybe somebody who's attending here today, if I'm not mistaken. So you could look Gerald up. But you want to be on the More button. When you click on the More button, you get this whole menu of options. What I recommend you do here is follow them first and then personalize the invite. And why I want you to follow them first is remember earlier when we talked about there's 562 million members on LinkedIn and less than half of those people go on once a month or more. Well, guess what? When they go on LinkedIn, their invitations aren't probably the first thing that they do. They may post a status update, do a couple other things, and then they've got 500 invitations that are pending and they're like, I'm not gonna look at those for now. So if you follow them, you are gonna see their updates in your homepage feed even before they accept your invitations. So follow them first. Then you click on Personalized Invite. When you click on Personalized Invite, this is where you add that personal note. So in the personal note, you would say, you know, hi, Lee, we met at today's HR Analytics Conference, let's connect on LinkedIn. That's enough, really, for the people here in the room, okay? Does anybody need help with this part? Just raise your hand if you do need help. I'm gonna go over to Mark here. You guys are gonna come with me. Hello. All right, so we're actually looking at this on your phone here. All right, so click on the drop down. Oh, you can, yeah, click on the drop down arrow right there. There you go. You see it? Okay. Personalized invite? Okay. There you go. Thank you. So um, on hers, I wonder if she might be limited. Are you in the LinkedIn app? Or are you in the? I'm, I'm not in the app. I'm you have to be in the app to do this. I'll be in the app, yeah. so I'll go into the app. Okay, very good. All right, good. I'm bringing my uh, video back over here, guys. Okay, so I think we've got the personalized invitations out. Did anybody else need a hand, or are you guys good? Keep going? All right, we're gonna keep going. So again, follow that technique. Hi, first name, if you've met or not, look at their profile, give them a piece of information or two, tell them why you want to connect with them, and then let's connect on LinkedIn, and then you know, you'll get a much higher acceptance right there. All right. Okay, I think we're gonna move on to the next section. This is good, good interaction. I see a lot of people practicing on their phones right now, which is really good. So every time you guys get business cards now, you know, if you're at an event, you know, do this right away. I do this and I go in my car in the parking lot before I pull off, I look through all the business cards that I received at that event and I'll send the invitations off right away while it's fresh in my mind and before I forget where I put those business cards, right? So do that right away. Okay, so now let's talk about status updates on LinkedIn. How many people are posting status updates regularly on LinkedIn? Show of hands? A couple of people here and there, good. So what I would recommend, you know, try to post at least once a week on LinkedIn, a status update. Even better would be if you can post daily, once a day on LinkedIn. Um, and what I wanna walk you through now is a technique that I will guarantee you will never post the same way ever again if you follow this technique, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through my technique here. It's called NEVA. NEVA is an acronym. And these are the elements of what I found to be really successful, high-performing posts on LinkedIn. So the N stands for news. What is the information that you're sharing with people? And as a marketer, I always put on my hat and I think about who's my target audience and why do they care about what I'm talking about? So I'm not gonna take a picture of my coffee and say this is great coffee unless I'm a coffee salesperson, right? I wanna think about why does my audience care about this information in the news? So the news, the N, is what I'm sharing. The E is I want to engage with people on LinkedIn. So guys, think about tree falls in a forest. If there's nobody there to hear it, did it actually make a sound? So same thing on LinkedIn. If you're not engaging with people on LinkedIn, it kind of gets buried in the homepage feed and nobody sees it. When you tag people in a status update on LinkedIn, it will appear in their homepage feed and their connections will see that post. So think about tagging people and or organizations and even both. Do so with relevance, meaning don't just spam and tag a bunch of people to get a bunch of views on that, that post, but make sure that it's relevant with the people that you're engaging with, okay? The V stands for some type of a visual. I personally love photos, um, but you could also use videos or you can use web pages or other uh, illustrations even in there as well. And the A is a call to action. And so as a marketer, I'm always thinking about what do I want my audience to do as a result of reading this post? So I'm gonna give you an example, and this was something I did, I think it was last week, right Lee? I, I featured Lee in my weekly Friday Shout series, and um, so walking through the NEVA, the N is the news, and I kind of tell people, today's Friday Shout feature is Lee Meadows, right? The E is I engage with tags, and I tagged Lee Meadows, I tagged Walsh College in there, and then I also talked about you know, the fact that Lee is a public speaker, presenter, and I said if you're looking for someone to book somebody, as part of my call to action, invite the audience to look at Lee and consider Lee in here as well. The visual, what I actually did, this is super easy. I just grabbed a screen capture of his LinkedIn profile. I didn't do anything fancy here. I just grabbed a screen capture and I cropped it and that was my visual element. 
So this was, I think I grabbed this last night and I had so far 20 likes, three comments on there and 100, you know, 1,877 views. So a really strong performing post. So what I would recommend for you is you're attending this conference today. There's a lot of great speakers and there's a lot of great takeaways and insights that you're learning today. So what I would recommend is take at least one picture of every presenter. And when I say at least one, I usually take five to 10 pictures of each person because then I can choose the best one where their mouth isn't like, uh, or you know, their crazy looks or whatever when they're presenting. So try to take a bunch of pictures of the presenters today. And at the end of the day, when you, before you leave here today, post a status update on LinkedIn and say, today I attended a phenomenal, I think I have this in here. Um, today I attended today's Michigan HR Analytics 18 presentation, you can mm -hmm. the hashtag, um, by the fun and inspiring at Brenda Meller of at Meller Marketing might be an example. And one key takeaway I learned is, so that might be something, you could do that as a status update today before you leave this session, or again, attend all the breakout sessions today, and then before you go home, post a status update with a couple of those pictures, tag the people that are in the pictures, both the people and the organizations they represent, use that conference hashtag, because that will give you some additional profile views as well, and then share that with your network, along with, here are my key takeaways, this is what I learned from today. And I don't know what those are, but it could be, you know, analytics is changing the landscape of recruitment strategies. And I learned the importance of posting frequent status updates on LinkedIn. I learned why you should engage your employees in your LinkedIn postings and how that helps with talent recruitment. Whatever those takeaways are, this is one thing I do. Um, when I'm at conferences, I have a hard time finding my notes sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, what did I learn? Where was that website? So what I do when I post it as a LinkedIn status update, I always know where it is, right? because I can go back into my LinkedIn and I can find the, uh, the ideas that I mentioned there, okay? So do consider doing that and feel free, to, like I said, um, if you wanna post something from today's presentation or throughout the day, but I would recommend updating your status, update today, and then trying to update at least once a week. Okay, so above all, you know, uh, I'm a big believer in the whole concept of social media karma. I guarantee if you follow my updates on LinkedIn, I will not be annoying to you. I try to be helpful and share marketing tips and resources. I try to tag people in my network. I'm always trying to pay it forward. And I'm a big believer in the whole concept of social media karma. And sometimes I feel that when my LinkedIn activity isn't as good, meaning I'm not getting as many leads and referrals as I used to, I start to kind of assess what have I been talking about lately. And when it feels a little bit more that I'm talking about my business than I am talking about my network, then I start to shift it back to talk about my network. And immediately, the leads and referrals start coming back in again. So I guarantee, talk less about yourself, talk more about other people. Um, some of the techniques I talked about today, when you comment on something, do so with five or more words. That's gonna help to jumpstart the algorithm. And when somebody comments on your post, think about that comment as that's a gift that they've given you. And what do we do when we get a gift? We send a thank you note. So acknowledge those comments. Even if Lee replies to my post and says, great insight, I will reply back to Lee and I will say, thank you Lee for your comment, hope you're doing well. So I'm gonna keep that engagement going back and forth in there. Give recommendations, you know, think about people in your network that you could help to pay it forward to and endorse their skills while you're, uh, while you're on their profile as well. And above all, this whole concept of social media karma, you should think about paying it forward with no expectation that they will return it, but I guarantee they will and the next time you post a status update about a job opening or ask for referrals, they will remember you and they will wanna help you with those, okay? So I think that's all I've got here today, guys, and I, like I mentioned, if you'd like a copy of today's presentation slides, just message me on LinkedIn and I'd be more than happy to share that with you. If you're not on LinkedIn yet, I've got um, a table downstairs with my business cards, just grab, me, grab a business card and then email me and I'll make sure you get a copy of the slides today, okay? So I think that's it. Oh, and I do have a, um, another Facebook Live coming up, just a quick shout out of that, where I'm gonna be talking about optimizing your LinkedIn profile. It's a free session. Uh, you can go to my Facebook page for Mellon Marketing to learn more about that, okay? So um, I think we've got a couple minutes left here, so I do wanna open it up to some questions, and then I think we've got a little break before the next session too. Is that right, Lee? Okay, so any questions from the audience? Yes. Yes. Again. Yep. Can you talk about that? Because I mean, they've been from different states. 
Sure, yeah. So the question is, what do we do with invitations from people that we don't know on LinkedIn? And how do you respond to those? Well, for, personally for me, I'm a big believer in, um, you know, I want to be open as possible in LinkedIn because I, I never know when that next connection might be a referral source for me. Um, and it, maybe they're not a good fit for me, for my business exactly, but they may have a great network. And um, the more people you connect with, the more visibility you get in terms of your status updates and things like that. So what I do when I get invitations from people I don't know, you can do this in the desktop. There's a way where you can, when you look at all your invitations, you can click on the manage all button, and then it'll pull up all of those invitations that you've received, and you can actually reply to those individuals. And what I do, I do this for every invitation I get from people if I don't know them. And I do have templates saved on my desktop, so I copy and paste this. But my short version is, hi, Carol, thanks for the invitation, have we met? And you, in, in many of these circumstances, I know we haven't met, you know we haven't met, but it's more polite than saying, who the heck are you and why do you want to connect with me, right? Um, and I do have a longer version too, and anybody in the room who sent me an invitation, Cindy, did you say you sent me an invitation without person? So Cindy will get my long, okay, you'll get my long version too. And my long version will say something to the effect of, hi Cindy, thanks for the invitation, I look forward to accepting. But first, can you tell me what was it that prompted you to reach out and connect with me on LinkedIn? If we've met each other at an event and I'm forgetting, can you remind me where we met? If not, what was it that prompted you? Was it common connections? Was it something you saw on my profile? Or are you just looking, you know, maybe LinkedIn suggested me as a connection and you decided to take LinkedIn's suggestion. At any rate, I look forward to your response and to connecting with you, right? And what happens is I find that the people that intended to connect with me, meaning they didn't do the connect, 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 connect without even looking at the names, but the people that intended to connect with me, they will reply back within one or two business days. And in, in Cindy's case, she'll say, yeah, actually I, I met you at the HR analytics conference. And I'll be like, oh yes, of course, thank you for reminding me. And then here's the cool thing. Now we've got a dialogue going back and forth. So now Cindy's gonna remember me, I'm gonna remember Cindy. Maybe I could say, oh, what did you learn at the conference today? And then maybe I tell her a little bit about my business. She might refer somebody to me in the future, vice versa. So that dialogue is really the key there. I'm not looking to screen people out. I'm actually looking to screen them in. And most invitations I will accept unless they come back and they say, hey, I wanna sit down and grab you a cup of coffee and sell you my SEO services or talk about how you can send referrals to me or it's all me, me, me. Then I won't accept those, but for the most part, I'll screen them in. Does that help? Okay, any other questions? Now we're gonna do a pie drawing. Cool, so we've got an apple pie. Anybody come in late that wants to have a chance at a pie? We're doing a pie drawing here today, no? And I'll be doing a couple more pie drawings throughout the day. I think I've got two more pies downstairs here. All right, so let's see what we got here. I'm not looking. Okay, so we've got, who's this? Oh gosh, Cameron Hutcherson. Cameron, come on up and claim your pie. <laughs> I threw the energy out there soon. <laughs> So Cameron has won a lovely apple pie. <laughs> there you go, sir. Enjoy. And I got you the personal pie size, so you do not have to share if you do not want to. You can eat that all you want. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, any other questions? I'm going to turn the camera off. So if we have any questions you don't want to ask on the camera, is that good? All right. Okay. All right.